Number 37, letter A. If the EMF of a coil rotating in a magnetic field is zero at t equals zero and increases to its first peak as t is equal to 0.1 milliseconds, what is the angular velocity of the coil? All right, so please refer back to number 36 for a complete explanation of this topic. I'm just going to try to run through the answers on this one, okay? But the uh, detailed explanation with graphs is included in the prior problem. So um, we know that uh, from the prior problem that uh, we, we kind of get this oscillating thing that if uh, EMF, if I'm just going to call it V for now, voltage is going to be zero at time zero, and then the voltage is a max at T is equal to 0 0.1 milliseconds, then what's going to happen is now V will then reach another zero, um, the same exact time period uh, away as the, as the max was from the first zero. In other words, this would be 0 0.2 milliseconds. Then this would reach now a, we would call it a minimum, I guess, in terms of it would be, or we would say a negative maximum. All right, at t is equal to then 0 0.3 milliseconds, v then goes back to zero <clears throat> at t is equal to then 0 0.4 milliseconds, and then v goes back to max, and you can repeat this pattern forever and ever at 0 0.5 milliseconds, okay? So now the period basically is, or what is it asking? Sorry, the angular velocity. So we can actually find, we, we have a formula. This is from another problem here in the chapter, and this is from way back when that the angular velocity is basically going to be equal to 2 pi divided by the uh, period, okay? We saw that the period was a function of, oh, I'm going to bring that over. In the other formulas, we saw that the period was a function of the angular velocity just like this, but all we're doing is just cross multiplying. All right, so I'm able to pull that out, put that in, and now uh, we understand that the period here, right, is going to be the time to take one full, make one full revolution, and again, this is all explained in the prior problem. The full revolution goes from this, once it then begins its repeating pattern there, uh, to the point uh, 4 milliseconds, okay? So therefore, then the angular velocity is going to be 2 pi divided by 0 0.4 milliseconds, but you know we need that in seconds, so multiply that by 10 to the minus 3, and then voila. So this is going to be 2 pi divided then by 0 0.4, uh, yeah, 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So this is about 15,000 or 1.57 times 10 to the 3, 4, it looks like, radians per second. All right. So that's that. That's letter A. Letter a B, at what time will its next maximum occur? So I think when they mean maximum, I think they mean the next positive maximum. And we already talked about that, right? It's going to occur at T is equal to 0 0.5 milliseconds. Okay. 0 0.5 milliseconds. So that's the answer for letter B. If you need it in seconds, you know what to do. Letter then C, and again, for a complete explanation, check out the prior problem. For letter C, what is the period of the output? We actually already answered that. We said that the period is 4 milliseconds. Excuse me, 0.4 milliseconds. Okay, that takes care of that. And then letter D now. Uh, when is the output first one-fourth of its maximum? All right, so um, we can probably actually use this formula now over here on the right-hand side to accomplish this task. So we have EMF. So let's let's maybe move some of this stuff on over a little bit. All right, so we have the formula that this is the EMF, basically. At some, let's call it at some point P, all right, or at some time T. Um, that's going to be equal to basically this term on in here is the max, if you notice, right? That's the EMF max. So if you know the max value, you can use that, okay? But we don't really know it, so let me just plug in EMF max. They use a sub-O. And that's going to be multiplied now by the sine of the angular velocity multiplied by the time, okay? But they want to know when the uh, EMF is one-fourth of the maximum, basically. So wait a minute, that means if I were to divide this on out, and I have now a ratio right, between these two, uh, that means that that ratio now is going to be equal to one-fourth, right, this ratio, because that's basically what, they, what they're what they saying. So that's going to be equal to the sine, then, of omega times time, okay? Now, what's the angular velocity? Well, we just found it, right, 1.57 times 10 to the fourth, okay? And what are they asking for? It says when, so it's asking then for the time, all right? 
So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to now take the, so let's just solve this actually for T instead of plugging in anything yet. we got to take the inverse sine of both sides. All right, so make sure your calculator is in radian mode now. Anytime you see this omega, right, you know that that's radians per second. So you're dealing with radians. So go to your mode, make sure it's in radian mode, okay? And then do inverse sine of uh, 0.25 or 1 fourth. Right, that works out to be now about 0 0.253, I guess ish is then going to be equal to omega times time divide out the omega right and here's now the function you're going to get so erase the omega now okay erase that and then um i'll plug in then the value here so this is 1.57 times 10 to the fourth okay and let's see what we get now so time here is going to be equal to that answer divided by, I'm going to go back and get grab the other exact answer. So this is about 1.61 1 or so, right? 1.61 1 times 10 to the minus fifth. And that's in terms of seconds, okay? So that is uh, when the output is first one-fourth of its max. And then it says, when is the next one-fourth of its maximum? Uh, so now if we had to so I guess if I were to yeah so now you have to you have to uh, be careful with the uh, what do you call it with the um, sine curve here basically all right and the reason why is because uh, so let's assume so let's say we have a, a little a little graph here um, so let's plot an axis and here it was zero here it was then it's at its max so it would look something like this. I'm gonna, I know I'm not starting at t, just pretend t is equal to zero over there. Actually, you know what, here, I'll start there. So then it's gonna go up to here, then it's gonna go up to here, then it's gonna go down to here and down to here. Again, for a full explanation, check out the prior one. So um, what's gonna happen here is that the first one fourth of its maximum, here's, here's where the slope is at a minimum, okay? Here's the first one fourth of the maximum. But then you might think, well, shouldn't that then next one fourth occur sometime over here, one full period away? Well, not exactly, because if you think about what the slope is like up here now, it should probably be equal to the slope right about at this point, right? So it's not one full period away, okay? But you can basically use some symmetry in order to calculate this. In other words, uh, <clears throat> in other words, if you know the time it takes to go from the minimum to, let's say, the next minimum at the top, okay, because that's where the slope is is uh, zero. What's this time to go from the first minimum to the second minimum? Well, it took two sec, uh, 0.2 milliseconds, right? So this is going to be 0 0.2 milliseconds, and then if you know that the time difference in here is now going to be 1.61 times 10 to the minus fifth seconds. Well, that also must mean symmetrically that from the top point to now this point in here is also the same time difference. Okay, so now I got to but subtract it basically. All right. So in other words, I got to do 0.2 milliseconds. So let's now take that time of 0.2 milliseconds, but let's convert that into seconds. So we have all the same units. So times 10 to the minus three. And then we got to subtract out now this little difference up here, which we said was symmetrically equivalent to the 1.61 times 10 to the minus fifth seconds. And when we do the subtraction, let's see what we get. So we get 0.2 times 10 to the minus third. Subtract out now that exact answer. And we get about 1.84, I guess. So 1.84, 1 1.8, oops, 1.84 times 10 to the minus fourth now um do, 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 uh, seconds right that'll be about just shy of two milliseconds all right so guys thanks so much for tuning in uh please remember if you can to subscribe like and tell your friends and uh, check out number 36 and we will see you soon take care